one thing that's notable about the Mass is that the Gospel, which is very late in our Lord's life on this earth, it's, it's after the resurrection, when he's telling Peter to follow him, then there's also this question that Peter asks about what will happen to John. Because Peter and John, of course, were very close friends, and they did a number of things together to learn from the Gospels, such as running to the tomb together on Easter morning. Peter was much older, John much younger, so it was a different type of relationship than, than a lot of male friendships, but one of an older man and a much younger man. The Mass makes us think about it because it not only has it as the Gospel, but also as the gradual and as the communion verse. So we're supposed to think about it in particular on this, on this feast day. It seems a bit obscure because it's hard to understand exactly what our Lord is saying and exactly what John is trying to convey to us and why he writes this story. But one thing we can say for sure is that Peter and John were very different people. Peter had been married and was probably married at the time also, of course, and had lived a long life and a life with a lot of blunders and sins and such things. We see that very evidently when we read the Gospel. Peter's always saying something rashly or asking, uh, no, you know, irritating questions and doing things which otherwise you would not expect of an Apostle. Whereas John is much, generally speaking, he's much more meek, he's in the background. And when he does something, it's for a very notable purpose, like asking our Lord very specific questions, for instance, in John's Gospel. He does have the one occasion where he asks fire to come down, or he wants to. So he also had a bit of fire in him. He was called a son of thunder. But it's according to tradition, John was granted the grace of virginity, so that he never sinned in that way. He never got married, and that he followed our Lord in a very much different way than Peter did. Peter followed him as a married man, and then eventually when his wife died, he went out to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, especially in Rome. John, on the other hand, was always devoted to Our Lady and never uh, entered into marriage, and so he was preserved from grave sin. It's most likely that he never committed a mortal sin in his life. So what we have in this episode is we have the two different types of people that are on this earth. The ones are those whom the Lord preserves from sin through a special grace, that during their time on earth, they, they never offend God in a grave way. That is a total grace from God, but there are some whom he preserves from that from their childhood onward, where they are just, they serve God in such a singular way. Hopefully some of the children who are here, maybe some of the adults that I don't know as well, I'm not really sure, but some of the children at least will be given this special grace so that they can serve our Lord in this way perfectly with a pure heart from the time this time onward. But for the most of the rest of us who have blundered around and fell down a bunch of times as we've gotten on our way, the blessing here is that Peter also had a mission in the church. Peter was also given a special grace, which is, in this odd way of providence, this beautiful way of providence, is that he was given the grace to fall down many times, to make lots of mistakes, and to at some times just be, in a way, uh, a total mess up. But at the same time, he was chosen to have a special mission in the church. Why? Because all of the experiences that he had, all the sins that he had committed, all the mistakes he had made, they were all used by God to enrich the church, to enrich his preaching, his letters, and all of the personal encounters he had with all of his all of the many people that he encountered in the years between our Lord's resurrection and ascension and Peter's death in 67. There's over 30 years there in which he was preaching and evangelizing. And you can be sure that all the things he did wrong came into his pastoral work and enriched others. So we should think about that today. Those of us who have had some special grace to be kept from mortal sin should treasure that grace and protect it. And those of us who are parents should help them to protect it. But those of us who have messed up plenty of times, we should also treasure that grace and realize that it is not for us, but for someone else. That there's something that we have gone through that we can give to someone else now because we have fallen in this way, we have messed up, we have sinned. Now we can help someone else to either avoid that sin 
or to climb out of the pit and come back into grace and serve God once again. So think about these two figures today. The church presents to us on John's feast day his comrade Peter also. So Peter and John, we should think about the two of them, how different they were, and yet how much they gave to the church precisely because God chose them, one, because he was the way that he was, hot-headed, uh, had lived a long life, had lots of experience and lots of mistakes, and the other one because he was so pure and would be so close to Our Lady during his lifetime and then enrich the church by his writings and preaching. So think about who you are, protect those who have that special grace of not sinning against our Lord in a great way, and those of us who have sinned in that way, that we can be thankful that now we have something to give to others and to keep them from despair and sadness.